thanks everybody for coming today we're pleased to announce that the federal reserve the office of thrift supervision and the national credit union administration are all adopting credit card rules that will restrict prior practices that we thought were unfair to consumers my point about this today is first this is a good step forward the federal reserve and the others have never before or not in years have they regulated credit card practices in the interest of consumers so this is a this is breaking new ground we did not get everything we wanted in these rules and there is more work to be done and I can talk about that if you'd like but certainly this is a good step forward and let me talk about some of the major impacts if you look at this example here the time that you have to pay your bill one of the things the card companies have been doing was reduce the amount of time you had to pay your bill then if you were late you've got penalties interest and it could pop up your interest rate they now will be required to give you at least 21 days to pay your bill second in terms of how they compute your balance they used to be able to compute the balance using a double billing cycle period which if you paid off your credit cards periodically was disadvantageous to you that practice is being now restricted in terms of the interest rate that you pay on your credit card they used to be able to bump up the interest rate without any advance notification without warning and could do it for any of a variety of reasons that ability of theirs is now being restricted there's some caveats on that but basically after you've had a card for a year they will not be able to retroactively change your interest rate and apply it to outstanding purchases without giving you advance notification and it will not be applicable to the outstanding purchases finally the fourth one here I'm not sure what that fourth one is finance charge transactions due to periodic fees there there are restrictions on those as well and those are some of the major impacts of the rules today now there are some things that are not addressed in these rules that we think should be addressed one of them is something I've talked a lot about is restricting the marketing practices of credit card companies on college campuses that was not addressed in these rules there also were some rules that were considered applying to overdraft fees by banks not addressed today more work to be done on that and another aspect was that if you have multiple and that's what I think we're looking at here if you have multiple outstanding interest charges the rules as proposed would have said they have to apply your payment for your highest interest debt which is what you would want many companies have been applying it to your lowest interest debt which is what's best for them the new rule allows them to average it over all of your debt which is better for consumers but not quite as good as what we wanted so we think there's more work to be done we do expect Congress may well consider and take up the credit card holders bill of rights again in the next session if they do we'll be there agitating for more changes including some of the things I just mentioned so that's that's basically our statement on the credit card rules as adopted today happy to take questions to remind me what what your plans are once you shift roles here in coming days as to what you plan to do about the credit card marketing specifically on college campuses and I'm sure and in fact during the campaign for Attorney General I talked about the Attorney General has more effective tools for attacking that problem first of all the Attorney General is the legal advisor to the Board of Regents and to each of the colleges and universities public college and universities in Ohio we will work with them to protect student information to try to limit or even eliminate the selling of student financial information we will also in the guise of the Attorney General heading the Consumer Protection Enforcement for Ohio monitor what's being done on campuses and we will go after anybody who is engaged in fraudulent or misleading practices on the campuses there also is legislation proposed to in various ways restrict credit card marketing on campuses Tom Patton has a bill for example there may be others we will be pushing for legislation as well so be kind of a three-pronged attack and if there are other ideas that people bring forward in the meantime we will look at them you know very seriously as a way of attacking that problem you'll recall we came to this problem and this is our speak out campaign and I'll take this back down and you see here visual representation we wanted Ohioans to speak out in favor of the credit card rules that were adopted today and we generated 5,300 individual comments and resolutions of support 
from, I believe it was 66 city councils and county commissions around Ohio, uh, over 4 million people represented by those bodies. And that was a significant percentage of the total comments received by the Fed and others nationally. So I think Ohioans have had a, a dramatic impact today in securing these protections for consumers. Do you think, uh, I know some of the uh, banking and credit card companies had argued that this would kind of cut off credit even more to people, that they would be forced to either raise fees on other people or not issue credit to more people. Can you respond to those? I'll say two things. Number one, we were concerned that given the problems that the banks have been facing and given the Federal Reserve's focus on shoring up the banks, that they might set aside these rules entirely. And we thought that would have been regrettable because uh, even though we're going through economic times that are difficult for the banks, fair treatment of consumers is not something that should go up and down with the business cycle. Uh, uh, second, the banks did respond vigorously to these proposed rules and said that this would cost them a lot of money. And they're estimating there was a law firm study done. It's a law firm that represents banks, so you know should be taken with a grain of salt. That this could cost the banks something like $10 billion uh, a year going forward. Uh, we think that those claims are exaggerated, uh, but we also think, and let me just say this: uh, it is no, there's no question financial institutions would uh, make more money and save more money if they were allowed to gouge their customers with impunity. That does not make it right, and that does not make it worth it. Uh, what, we're, what we're saying is, if they're taking $10 billion out of the pockets of American citizens by unfair practices, uh, they should not have those profits. And there should be a, a basic code of conduct that is enforced, that, that is fair to consumers, and we thought that each of these rules as proposed and the ones adopted today fell well within uh, that framework.